Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the dorsal fin on the top of the Xena Super Duty. This is how it ends, and it's pretty ugly. It needs a fairing. So in this video, we are gonna make a fairing to finish off the forward edge of the dorsal fin. The first thing I did is put down duct tape to prevent anything from sticking to the aluminum. Then on top of that, I just sprayed a blob of spray foam. Now I thought that I could just cut it and shape it and sand it, and it would be a nice plug for the fiberglass. But as you can see, it's really just like a sponge. It was hard to cut, hard to sand, and there's a lot of big air pockets in it. So on top of that spray foam, I mixed up and applied some super fill, which is a two-part filler that sands kind of like balsa wood. So I just spread it on there on top of the foam. And once it was dry, I sanded it the best I could to shape it how I wanted it. It usually takes a couple coats of filler to get enough on there to be able to sand it smooth and shape it how you want. But the second time I used regular old Bondo instead of the Super Fill. Bondo is a little bit thinner and just a little bit easier to spread than the Super Fill. Then I sanded that to shape. Then I cut off the edges where I couldn't really sand or feather in. So you can see here, I'm just kind of cutting the edges and breaking them off. After sanding this layer, you can see I have a little dip right about here. So I mixed up some more Bondo and piled it up on the front so that I could level that off or make it even or straight with the top. But either way, I needed to build up the front. And as you can see here, it, uh, here it is slopped on there, but it does build up that little dip that was in the front. After it was sanded and shaped how I like, I started putting down black electrical tape to tape everything off so that the fiberglass resin doesn't stick to it. The reason I'm using electrical tape instead of duct tape is because it goes around complex curves. Now after that was done, I just spread Vaseline on it and this kind of works as my release agent. It just helps prevent the fiberglass resin from sticking to any of the tape. All I've done here is cut a few pieces of fiberglass cloth and I've laid it on top of a piece of plastic. Now I'm just going to pour some resin on that first layer of cloth and I will work it into the entire layer with a brush. Now I'll add the second layer and I'll just put that right on top and with a brush, I will just soak up all the fiberglass resin from the first layer up through the second layer. It takes a little while of brushing and dabbing, but eventually that second layer will soak up the resin from the first layer. Now I ended up using four layers of cloth, which is actually too thick for this fairing as I'll show you later. Once I was done with all four layers, I cut, it, cut the plastic away, but I left it, as you can see, I left the fiberglass on a piece of the plastic. Now, we'll take it over to the airplane where I've already put the Vaseline on there, and we're just gonna flop it over, peel off the plastic, and with that same brush, just work the fiberglass into the shape that I want. And again, this is why it's too thick. You, I saw a little bit later after it was done that it didn't quite form exactly to the shape because it had too many layers of cloth. Two would have worked, three might have worked also, but four was a little too much. Now I'm adding a piece of peel ply, which is nothing more than a piece of aircraft fabric. If you've ever built a tube and fabric airplane, this is the skin of the airplane, it's just the fabric. And using that same technique, I'm not gonna add any resin, but I'm gonna keep dabbing at it and it will pull up the resin from the fiberglass. And the reason we do this is because it makes a much, much smoother finish on the finished fairing.
And just because of the compound curve, I found it easier to use a couple pieces rather than one piece to try to fit it around there. So this, I'm actually gonna put three pieces on here as you'll see, but this is a second piece and then the third piece goes on in the back. It takes a while and some dabbing, but eventually the peel ply will soak up the fiber or the resin from the layers below. Well, I haven't turned the heat on in the hanger yet, so it's a little chilly. So I let it sit overnight with a heat lamp to help it cure. And of course, the fun part is waiting a day and then peeling off the peel ply and popping off the fairing to see what it looks like. Now, because I use a few different pieces of peel ply, where the peel ply patches go together, you get a little ridge in the resin and the fairing has to be sanded anyway. So I just sanded it down and then I'm using these hotel key cards to slide under it and pop it off. Here's what it looks like. Now I'm just using some alcohol and a paper towel to wipe off the Vaseline that's on the bottom just because it's greasy and messy. Now I want to get rid of these jagged edges, so I'm just trimming them off with a pair of shears. Obviously I'm cutting it much larger than it will get cut for its final cut. Sorry, this clip's a little dark, but all I'm doing now is drawing lines on here approximately where I want to actually trim the fairing. Now I actually have the fairing mostly trim, but I do have to trim the back end to match the aluminum dorsal fin. So right now you can see the back of it is just straight, but see those angled lines I drew? That's the end of the dorsal fin, and I want the fairing to sit up next to it and not over it. So I need to trim it on those lines, but here you can just see what it looks like. It follows the same curve, or the same straight line as the top of the dorsal fin. So here you can see how I've angled the back of it. And if I pull the fairing away, you'll see what I mean by how it matches the front of the aluminum fin. Not really sure why I filmed this clip, but hey, here it is. Here's what it looks like. Well, prior to this, there was one more step that I didn't show because I actually did it over at my neighbor Len's house because he had the fiberglass resin. But I just spread resin and micro balloons on the fiberglass to smooth it out. I sanded that and then I sprayed it with this sandable primer it's a filler primer now i've attached this fairing the same way i've attached the fairings on my cruiser and that's just with little sheet metal screws but i had mentioned before about using four layers instead of two or three and if you'll notice it doesn't fit perfectly there's a little tiny gap back here one of the reasons why is i need to trim this a little bit more because this is actually on top of here so once i trim that it'll sit down probably a little bit but either way it, there's just a little bit of a gap and i don't know if you can see from the side you know it, it sticks up just a little bit it's a it's just a little bit too thick so there's a little bump right here which i don't really like too much but you know there's a few options i can cry about it i can uh, throw it away and make a new one which i don't really feel like doing or I can just use it and be happy with it. <laughs> and I'm just going to use it because I don't feel like making a new one. But I think once all this is painted, that little tiny gap in here will kind of disappear. And, you know, I'm standing on a ladder right now from the ground <laughs> at my eye level. It's right, I can't even see it anyway. And I'm six foot one and most people <laughs> will not look up there and be able to see it anyway. So I'm happy with it. I'm just gonna use it as it is. It's not perfect. And if I would have used just two layers of glass or maybe three, it would have been a little bit easier to conform to this tight bend down here. And that's why there's a little bit of a gap as I think four layers was just a little bit too thick for this. But, you know, that's part of learning. Every time I make a fiberglass fairing, I learn something. So next time I will know. And by the way, I plan on making a whole fairing to go around here like I did for my cruiser. 
Well, anyway, here's what it looks like on the airplane. It'll look nice once everything's painted. It'll kind of finish off the front of that dorsal fin and it won't be so blunt and open like it was before. One thing I want to do yet is trim the back of it right along this dotted line. I don't like how the back looks. I just want to trim it a little bit more square. But once I do that, it'll be finished up. And here is what it looks like from the front. Better than the blunt edge of the fin itself. Well, everybody, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed the little tutorial. If you've never made a fiberglass fairing, give it a try. It's not that hard to do. They're fun. It's a good way to jazz up your airplane and personalize it a little bit. Even if the first one comes out like crap, they're cheap enough to make. You can always make it again. I'll see you again on the next video.